Hi everyone, and welcome back to GameMakerCast. In this video tutorial, I want to take a look at an open source plugin called Bulb. Bulb is a free to use lighting engine for GameMaker Studio 2. I think it's really amazing and I can't wait to show you guys. So let's roll the introduction and get right into it. If you're looking for the full source code of this project, you can grab it from the Patreon post found in the description below. Now at the current time of recording, if we go to github.com and we go to Juju Adams and we go to Bulb, the repository, you can see that when we click on releases, the current version is version 20. So that's the version that this video is going to be used for. If you grab a newer version, it may follow different setups. I'm not sure. But anyway, what we want to do is we want to download the package, the YYMPS file. Once we've downloaded it, let's go to GameMaker Studio and import it by using the tools menu and say import local package. What we wanna do is find the version of bulb that we're importing and just say open. Now we can import this entire system here. So we'll say add all and then we'll click import. Now in our actual project itself, we should have a bulb folder. You can see that we have some system stuff here and I'm not gonna go through all of this stuff. That is up to you whether or not you wanna go through it or not. We also have a little bit of a config and really this is if you read it the distance around the edge of the camera so if you are experiencing pop in lights then you can make this a little bit bigger but i'm going to leave it at 100 pixels now like i said i'm not going to go through everything but i'm going to show you how to get the system up and running and a lot of this what i did is i went to github i went to the bulb repository and then i checked out the objects to figure out how each one worked so you can see this is the render itself. So you can go to the create event and you can kind of read and pick out what you need. And that's what I did to figure out how bulb works. So if we go back to Game Maker Studio, you can see in my objects, I have a bulb folder here. And this is where all my files exist that I need to have bulb actually working. Now, the way that bulb works is if we open up our room, you can see that we have the white box here. So that means that we are using a viewport. If we scroll down to viewports and camera, you'll want to make sure that you enable viewports, clear your viewport black background, and then enable viewport zero or whatever one you're using. Once that's set up, you can go ahead and you can create a bulb render object. Now, my bulb render object, and like I said, a lot of this is using the code that we already have in GitHub but I've changed a few things. I've made it so I can pass in the ambient color and it has a default there. And then this is the code that I extrapolated from GitHub. So we get the current camera and then we set up a lighting uh, engine. So a lighting engine equals whatever the script is and we can middle click and you can see it has a whole bunch of different things in here. So it calls the script to create a lighting engine based on the ambient color using a soft add and a smooth shading. So this just depends on how you like your shadows. If we take away soft, there's also a few different modes. There's hard add and hard max, but I'm going to keep mine on soft just for this presentation here. Some of the other functions I've added is the ability to update the ambient color and the ability to get the current ambient color of our lighting system. Now, before we can actually do anything, let's check out our player. If we open up our player and we go to the create event, you can see a lot of this code, let me actually maximize this. A lot of this code is some platformer code. At the very top, we have a lighting instance and then we have a light and we're gonna see this lighting instance multiple times within our project. But how this is set up is right now in the step event, we say if we don't have a lighting instance, then we try to find that lighting rendering engine that we just created. Now in the GitHub project, it referred to the object itself, meaning that the object had to be created first. And because I'm super forgetful, I wanted to do something like this where I waste a single tick or a single step in whatever object I'm using to try and find that lighting engine so that I don't always have to remember that, hey, it's gotta be the first thing in my room. Now, if I middle click here, you can see that it's just a macro and it points to the actual object. And then later on, we have a macro for the mask. So that's just something to remember. So once we found the lighting engine, we're going to go into event user zero and event user zero. All we're doing is creating a new bulb using the lighting renderer that we found using that sprite, which I just talked about at the X and Y location. I'm upping the scale and I'm making my color of that light to be a dark color by 32 uh, red, green and blue. So that's pretty much all we need to do here. And the only other thing, we have a whole bunch of platformer code, but at the very end, we're updating the X, Y position of our light just to keep up with our player. Now, before we can actually go into our room, the other thing I wanna look at is the bulb static. 
So the bulb static means that this particular collider is not going to do anything. It's not going to move. Again, if we put a create event, you can see that we have the instance lighting. We go to the step event, we find the instance, and then we go into event zero. Because I'm doing this more than once, I think I'm doing it a couple times, maybe three, uh, perhaps this is a good chance to extrapolate all of this into its own function. But for this tutorial, we'll just keep copying and pasting it. Event zero is where the actual code happens. So we have an occluder here. We create a static occluder based on our lighting renderer and then set the X, Y image scale angle. And then we set all of the uh, top, sorry, left, top, right, and bottom information. They get all of this stuff right here. If we go to github.com and we go to objects and we look at the static occluder and we go to the create event, you can see that it's pretty much all right here on the create event. We've just moved it to a different event so that we don't run into any errors. Now back in our game, if I close all of this and I go to my room, you can see that I already have a player in my room. But let's go and draw some of these static occluders here. We'll draw them like this and we'll make them go up and let's do this so we can go out this way and i'll have it go down i'm not a great level designer um, but i'm going to just put a few like here and here so if i hit f5 what's going to happen is we have a light renderer and then a light on our player itself you can see the surrounding area is lighting up a bit and when i get close to the edge you can see that the light is moving and being pointed down as it comes into the gaps and the holes. So you can see this is really neat. And I mean, it wasn't really that much of a setup. I can't get back up there, but we'll fix that in the um, in the level itself. Okay, so we have some dynamic ones as well. The dynamic ones work exactly the same as the static. So I'm gonna put this over here and I'll put one over here. And if I hit F5, again, this code you can find directly from GitHub. But all we're doing is we're changing the image angle of this one, so it's rotating. And you can see the shadow is drawing automatically. And to me, that's really neat. Now, our room is pretty dark. So what we can do is we can add some lights and Bulb will handle this for us. Let's say I wanted to add a light right here. I can extend this and I can change the light color. I can choose whether I want to flicker on and off and the percentage. I'm just going to leave it as a white color. I'm going to expand this a little bit more and actually check out what we're doing in this variable. Sorry for what we're doing in this object and everything is in the event user zero. And you can see that this looks very familiar. I should say this code right here to our player. We're creating a light, we're changing the X and Y scale and then setting the color. And that's all we need to do. So if we go in our room and we have a light here, let's copy and paste it and let's put another light here and let's change the light color from a white color. Let's pick a random green color. We'll choose a dark green. Now, if I hit F5, Bulb's gonna see these and it's automatically gonna render these lights. And you can see because this one is moving, we already get that shadow. And if I come down here, you can see that we have the green light. And when our player goes into it, he gets lit up. And you can see that our light is also being affected by the green light. So there's a bunch of other things that you can do with Bulb, but these are just the basics. I also have one called a zone and ambient change. So let's say we go to the level and let's pretend that um, for some reason that we go outside. This is the outside area. So what I can do is I can bring in this zone change and I have a variable to change the ambient color of my screen. So right now the ambient color of white will completely turn the lights off. So if I run my game and I go all the way out here, I make sure I don't fall into any holes. As soon as I go past the zone, you can see that the lights turn turn off. So it's like I'm in daylight. I can have multiple ones of these. So I could have, let's say, one over here. It's a horrible, horrible choice. Well, let's change the lighting color to uh, some kind of pinkish red. And I don't think I make it up there. And let's put one here at the bottom just to show a bunch of different colors working here. Uh, what don't we have? We'll have a bluish color. Okay, so now if I hit F5, we should have the lighting on the player. We have the lighting on our dynamic occluders. We have the lighting on our static, and we can see that the ambient light changed as soon as I went into that zone. So hopefully this will give you a little bit of information on how to use bulb. Like I said, a lot of this code I found on the GitHub repository, just really looking through the objects itself and extracting what I needed.
I'd like to thank everyone for watching the video. First off, I'd like to apologize as I didn't know I wasn't recording my mouse, so I hope everything turned out fine. And a special thanks to the following Patreon users in no particular order. Bill, Darth Wolf, Bunt, BSC, Ian, Ashby, Victor, Paul, Lucas, Edward, Robert, Angel, Andrea, Annie. Thank you all so much. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope you like the channel. Please share it with your friends.